Check, check. Check, check, check. Mic's on. Music's on. We're good to go. Should be live. Yes, we are. Awesome. We are live. We are on live chat. We are live on YouTube. And I am wondering, what is next after UFC 300 for these fighters? What's next? What is next for these fighters after UFC 300? There's really so much to talk about with that. There's so many big matchups to be made. I mean, it's it's crazy, honestly. Just Max Holloway alone, there's like three different things you could do with him. It, it's what he wants to do, you know? But what's next for these fighters, man? What's next for Alex Pereira? There's a lot you could do with him as well. It's so much fun. I love talking about this stuff. You know, it's just amazing. UFC 300 was such a big card. I'm so happy we got it. I'm happy it's honestly, it's finally over. Because a lot of the annoying things that the MMA community was doing could now stop. So let's go ahead and start with a poll. What's next for Max Holloway? Hello, 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 people. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to today's stream, tonight's stream. What's next after UFC 300 for all these fighters, man? Let me know. I think the most highly debated one is definitely Max Holloway because there's so much you could do with him. But like, really, like, wh where do we go now after UFC 300? Where do we go, man? It's insane. YFF, what's up, dude? Hoo ah, devil dog. <laughs> Hoo ah. No, that sounds so silly. And it's Oorah from Marines. Just saying. O O R A H. Hoo ah. That's an army thing. Or like the uh, the soldiers like to say Hoo ah, Hoo ah, a million fucking times. <laughs> you ever go onto an army installation, man? That's like the only thing you hear is Hoo ah, Hoo ah. <laughs> it's all they know how to say, man. That's all they know how to say. How you doing? How you doing, YFF? Looks like if you're the person that voted, you think Islam Makachev is next for Max Holloway. That's interesting. I think Armand's the number, the true number one contender at lightweight. But, you know, that's not stopping Dustin Poirier from getting a title shot, which is very interesting. I'll have to make a video on that. What I would really like to see, I'd like to see Armand get his rematch. He's definitely earned it. And he is he is the real number one contender now. It's pretty definitive. It's not Poirier. It's not Oliveira. It's not even Gaethje now, unfortunately. <laughs> For me, it's, uh, it's Armand. He's the number one contender. It's weird to see Poirier jump in the, jump in the ladder like that. Only coming off one win. On paper, it's Armand, but I'd rather see DP. Oh, Dustin Poirier versus Armand. 
That'd be interesting. I think I think Armand would take that to be honest. Yeah, I think I think Armand would definitely take that. He's got the wrestling advantage. He's got the submission advantage. I'd say. But that would, but Dustin Poirier could definitely present some real problems on the feet. That's an interesting matchup, though, honestly. Dustin Poirier and Armon. Skyburners, what's up, brother? Max me Max beats both fraud champions. <laughs> I don't know if he beats Islam. I think he's got a real shot against Teporia, to be honest. He's a completely different style than Volkanovski. The only problem is Max isn't that great. Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. Max is so great, but he's not as effective when he's put on the back foot. When he's coming forward, that's when he's dangerous. At, at his, you know, his most dangerous. And Ilya, if we know anything about Ilya, he's going to pressure. To every single fight Teporia has been in, it's foot on the gas. He's the one taking the center of the octagon and pushing forward. So. Sorry about that, guys. I had to close my door. My dogs are wanting to bark. WMC, what's up, dude? Noah Smith, what's up, man? What's up, guys? WMC, I see you changed your profile picture. Looks different. I can't even tell what the hell that is from right here. Glad to see you in here, man. Both of you guys. Noah says, give Kayla immediate title shot. Screw air punch pen. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. 100%. I'm actually going to go ahead and pin that comment. Yeah, that, that division, women's 135, is so incredibly lackluster right now. It needs, it desperately, desperately, desperately needs someone like Kayla Harrison to breathe some fucking life into that division. That division doesn't even have a heartbeat right now. It's on life support, okay? Kayla Harrison <laughs> is the paramedic, you know, holding the EKG machine or whatever it is that, you know, they bring people back to life with, man. Give her a fucking title shot, man. Give her a title shot. It's She's fun. She's exciting. It's something new. Give her a title shot. And then if Amanda Nunes wants to come back and fight her, after she's the champion, that would be amazing. That'd be cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that, you know? Yeah, great take, Noah Smith. 100%, man. 100% agree. Yeah, I think he beats he beats Ilya if his chin holds up. Yeah, he could. He's got a shot against Ilya. He does. Uh, but if Ilya pressures him, I could see it being a very similar fight for Max as it was, uh, you know, with, with Volkanovski. If Ilya pressures, and he has every fight, so, you know, still be fun, though. Max is definitely the number one contender at featherweight. WMC keeps changing his profile pick. Interesting. Interesting. Legit didn't see Brundage tap. Did the ref just call it early? Yeah, no, Brundage tapped. He tapped. Meanwhile, Sky is still X Mass Fest. <laughs> hey, man. Skyburner still got the A. Yeah, still got the Grinch and Santa Claus profile pick. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. How are you guys doing? WMC, Noah. How are you guys doing, man? We doing good? We doing all right, boys? I called Alex Chinning Jamal and everyone coped. Hey, uh, you were right, man, if that's what you said. I was certain that Jamal Hill was going to have more success on the feet with Pereira. You, you know, I, I'm i not going to lie. I picked I picked Jamal Hill to win. I, you know, I'll own that. I was wrong. I, I don't think I'm picking against Pereira anymore, even, even against Ankalaev. It just seems, bro, it just seems like light heavyweight is just his division. He... He was definitely too big for middleweight, cutting too much weight. At light heavyweight, man, he's good. Like, he's solid. He looks strong. He looks big. He just looks like a solid guy at, at light heavyweight, man. You know, it, it went against Yuri, he took clean punches from Yuri, and his chin looked good. It looked refreshed. You know, he took some clean shots against Jan. 
Yeah. Light heavyweight just seems to be Pereira's division, bro. I, I really don't want him going back down to middleweight. I like him at light heavyweight, man. Stay at light heavyweight, Pereira. Doing all right. Hoping everyone is well. Oh, WMC's back. Different profile picture. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that's the OG. Yeah, hope, you, hope you're doing well too, man. Hope you're doing well too. I almost wasn't going to stream tonight. Uh, I am getting back into thing, guys. Getting back into things. I'm going to start streaming more. I almost didn't stream tonight because uh, there was a, a, a little like leak in my house. Um, the discharge from my from my AC unit, the, the liquid that's discharged, uh, backed up. And it backed up uh, in my furnace. And so the little closet that my furnace is is leaking water everywhere. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know, so um, got it fixed. Got it fixed though, but yeah, leaked a shitload of water everywhere. I'm like, what? What is all this? <laughs> so, a little, a little scary, but it's all good. It's all good, man. Skyburner says, same. Haven't picked Alex to win at light heavyweight yet, but he keeps proving me wrong. Yeah, he does. He was proving me wrong too. I thought Yuri had the style to really present some problems, and Yuri did. Yuri did have some success against Pereira, but Pereira's chin held strong against Yuri, man. Like, he took some pretty big shots from Yuri and never really got rocked. You know, never got really, never really let, got hurt or at least showed that he was hurt. So, yeah, he really impressed me there and he really impressed me against Hill. Sky, that's why you buy, boy. What? <laughs> what? Sky, that's why you buy, boy? What the hell does that mean? Yuri legit bounced back. Thought it was over for Yuri. Yeah, Yuri, bro. <laughs> I thought it was Yuri over for Yuri too in the first round against Rackage. He took so many fucking leg kicks. Big leg kicks too. Like Rackage is a big guy, man. And he can kick. Like he was just, I, I don't, Yuri's legs, man. I don't know how, like, bro. I don't know how Yuri was like still standing in the second round. That dude took so many leg kicks. I, I thought for sure we were going to be seeing like a leg kick finish for for Rackage in the second round, but man, Yuri Yuri's a, he's a wild boy, man. He's a wild boy. He's crazy. He's crazy. Anakin Skywalker, what's up, man? Bo Nickel is the Brock Lesnar of his division. <laughs> that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty accurate comparison, to be honest. Yeah, he's a lot like uh, he's a lot like good old Brock. Hill is going to take another L to Yuri. I think his title contention days are over. Hmm. Hill and Yuri, that's a fun matchup. That was the matchup that was supposed to happen last year. Um, but then Hill got injured. I like that matchup. I like that matchup a lot. That's a fun fight. That's a real fun fight. I don't know who wins that, though, to be honest. I want to say that Yuri's going to give him problems with all the pressure. Yuri's going to, like, overwhelm Hill. And I think I think Rackage probably hits harder than Jamal Hill. That's just speculation, of course. But Yuri's chin looked fucking great. I didn't think it was going to look that good. He was taking clean shots from from Rackage, clean one twos, jabs, hooks. His chin looked good. It's it was more than his legs. It was, in that fight with Rackage. It was just Yuri's overall toughness, man. So I I would I'm gonna pick Yuri for that. I think he's gonna overwhelm Hill. And it's also important to note that I don't think Hill Hill was completely unconscious from Pereira twice. When he first hit the ground, he woke back up when he hit the canvas, and then all the hammer fists knocked him out again. I don't think Yuri was ever fully out against Pereira. So I think that's going to factor into that too. I, I think Yuri, I don't think he took as much damage against Pereira as Hill did. And so that's that's definitely going to be, in a, you know, and that was a lot, that fight was a while ago too. That was 295. Hill's matchup, you know, was at 300. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm going to pick Yuri against Hill. Yeah, I think he's just going to overwhelm him. But you never know. Hill's a dangerous guy. Hill is just Joe Pfeiffer, but with better fight IQ. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. That's fair. Never piss off an Eastern European who thinks he's a samurai. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't be fucking around with that. Leave leave those guys from that region alone. They're all samurais. Hill called out Yuri. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that Hill wants to get in there and fight with Yuri. Yuri wants to get in there and fight with Hill. Why not do that? Hill should go up to 205, to be honest. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> Hill talked so much trash and got what he was coming. Yo, Hill Hill took the Ilya Taporia route. He he had the Instagram bio, uh, you know, saying that he's the uh, the the undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world. He had the record on there. You know, he he was talking. He did all the stuff Ilya Taporia did, uh, probably besides producing a movie. Um, but yeah, he was doing all the trash talking, doing all the all the little confident shit. Just didn't pay off. Looks, you know. That's a double-edged sword, because when Ilya did it, it looked cool, you know? He called his shot and pulled it off. Jamal Hill did it, and, you know, he's... It, Jamal Hill, bro, he's going to stay off social media for, like, six months. After getting knocked out like that, after her, after Pereira said, Hey, Herb Dean, stay back. <laughs> Bro's in there telling Herb Dean what to do. Who's the referee in that fight? I think Pereira's doing, like, three jobs. He's the champion, he's the fighter, and he's the referee, right? Maybe he's going to be the judges and the uh, promotion, too. He'll, he'll, bro, Pereira's just taking over everyone's job. He, he, Herb Dean goes a step in. He puts his hand up, says, "No, thank you. <laughs> you, you stay over there. <laughs> you stay back, ref. I'm gonna do what I want to do. You're gonna need to come here in a few seconds though, after I knock this guy out." <laughs> and then he emotes on him. Alex Pereira tells tells Herb Dean to get out of there. He's telling the ref what to do. He then knocks down Jamal Hill, knocks him out, and then emotes on him, man. Like, damn, bro. Hill's, Hill's got to stay off. He's got to stay off social media for a long time. I, that, that guy, I'm not going to lie. I feel a little bit bad for Hill. I mean, I shouldn't because he did it to himself talking all that shit, you know. But he's generating hype for the fight. I get that. But then to get knocked out like that, bro, and emoted on. What if Pereira just, like, hits the gritty on the next guy that he knocks out? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god he, imagine he just chins Magabat and Kaliath and then does a Fortnite dance over his body <laughs> oh my god that's wild dude Skyburner says Hill is still my boy hey Justin Gaethje is still my boy alright <laughs> I don't think there's yeah, I, no, I don't want to say there's anything worse that's ever happened to a fighter cause Gaethje got knocked out, but he went out there fighting like he always fights, and I couldn't be more proud of him. That's still my boy. It always will be. But it's pretty rough, man. And it's pretty rough. Us Justin Gaethje fans, we're hurting right now, man. We're hurting. Tough, tough to watch your boy go through that, you know? The Max KO was bananas. Yes, it was. It was that's that's up there in like all-time great UFC moments. I, Max Max is a Jerome Holloway is the fucking man. Got to give him his respect. Did they get fight of the night bonus for that KO finish? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about Max and Gaethje. Yeah, they they got fight of the night and Max got Max got a double three hundred thousand dollar bonus. Max Holloway got six hundred thousand dollars in bonuses. Insane performance of the night and fight of the night and. That was 100% fight of the night. I'm glad Gaethje got paid a lot of money for that too. I'm glad Gaethje's walking away with 300k bonus for that too, because he took he took so much damage in that fight, man. Crazy, crazy good fight. Connor versus Jerome, make it happen. I would like to see that. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, Max Holloway would destroy Connor. I don't even think that would be competitive. <sighs> Connor should skip everyone and fight Islam. <laughs> okay, now we're trolling. Now we're trolling, YFF. Now we're trolling. Who's this man? 
Who's this? Who's this goon? Max is such a G for that finishing sequence. Yeah. I imagine dominating the fight. I mean, he won. You might be able to give Gaethje the fourth round because he did knock Max Holloway down. But and he, Gaethje had some moments in that fight, but Max did in, in that round, the fourth round rather. But Max did too. I don't know if you can give him the fourth round. Maybe I'm just coping. Either way, if you give him the fourth round or not, Max Holloway was easily, easily ran away with that fight. Four rounds to one, maybe 5-0. And then last 10 seconds of the fight points to the center, the center of the octagon says, hey, let's go. Right after Gaethje threw a rolling thunder, by the way, Gaethje did a front flip trying to land a, a heel, you know, being a, being a wild guy. And then Max says, okay, I see what you did there. I got to one up you, you know, because he's Max got to be cooler. He points to the center of the ground, says, let's go. And then knocks him out with one second left in the fight. I don't know. I don't know if there's, you know, recent history. I don't know if there's a crazier moment in a fight. That, that's that got to be like top five fights all time in the UFC. Insane. Insane. And that's why, that's why I can't be too upset for my boy Justin Gaethje, right? You know, he went out there, he went out there and fought like how he likes to fight. And it was entertaining as shit. And he didn't even have to take the fight. He had a title shot at lightweight. He could have just sat out and waited for his title shot. And he rightfully earned one. Put that on the line, man. I I respect that guy. And I respect Max for taking a tough fight too. That's a hard fight. Yeah, great fight. There, There really wasn't a loser in that fight, to be honest. Everyone won in that, in Max versus Gaethje, especially the fans. The fans fucking won for sure, man. Great fight. I think if Yuri beats Hill, give him Wreckage or Roundtree. If Yuri beats Hill, I think he deserves a title shot. Because Yuri, Yuri just beat Wreckage. Well, why, why would we give him Wreckage again? Yuri just beat Wreckage, Anakin Skywalker. Are you trolling? I might be pulling my leg right now. Yeah, Yuri just beat Rackage. If he beats Hill, he deserves a title shot. Even if it's Pereira still. Give him the Pereira rematch. Like, you know, two big wins like that at light heavyweight. Anakin Skywalker's a Max Holloway fan. Love it, man. I called that they give him the fight of the night to Max versus Gaethje before it even happened, but that's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I think I think everyone kind of knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I'm a Justin and Max fan. I'm winning. Skyburner's rooting for both sides. That way he cannot lose. <laughs> Lopez needed that bonus. I thought Diego Lopez was for sure getting a performance of the night bonus. Now, in the post-fight presser, Dana White did say that he's going to take care of Diego Lopez and Kayla Harrison and Davison Figueredo. Basically, all the other fighters on the on the fight card that had a great performance but just didn't get an announced bonus. So that means they're going to get a locker room bonus, guys. They're going to get a locker room bonus. All those all those guys that didn't get the 300k bonus. They're the, the UFC is going to make them right. They got to give them something. You know, 25, 50k, something. They'll they'll get some sort of bonus. The UFC does that quite a, quite a bit, give them a locker room bonus. The knockdown wasn't officially counted. Yeah, which I think is really weird. Like what what constitutes a knockdown? Max was down on both of his legs. And one hand, he was like kind of sitting like almost cross-legged, but like both legs off to the side. That looked like a knockdown to me. I, the UFC is real weird, though, with how they count stuff. You know, like Colby versus Usman 2. I thought Colby took him down, but the UFC didn't count Colby's takedown, which, again, he was on both of his knees and both of his hands. Usman was. How is that not a, a downed fighter? How is how does, how's that not count as a takedown? I just... I don't, I don't get it. UFC is weird to me with stuff like that. The only way Chandler's fighting Connor is if Chandler gets the belt, which will sadly never happen. That being said, I predict Chandler versus Armon is next for Armon. Okay. Hmm. Maybe. Justin just should have went for the title instead of Max. Um... I don't know if that's necessarily the right move. I bet he got paid more money to appear on UFC 300 than he would have against Islam. And hear me out on this. UFC 300 was kind of lacking 
at least to the fans, the larger MMA media, before that fight was announced. Once they announced Holloway versus Gaethje for the BMF belt, everyone's perception of UFC 300 changed. And, and rightfully so. The UFC needed a big fight. Yan versus uh, Yan Xiaonan and Wei Li Zhang wasn't big enough. The main event hadn't been put together yet. They didn't really have a crazy big fight on the card that's like that really pushed people over the edge on buying it, right? And that was that fight. And Gaethje knew he deserved a title shot, so Gaethje had some, some bargaining power with the UFC. I bet he got paid a lot of money. I bet he got pay-per-view points. I, I bet he got like a clean, like at least five, six hundred thousand dollars just for showing up. I, yeah, I bet, I bet Justin Gaethje made, made at least a million, two million bucks from that fight. I'm not sure if he would make that against Islam in just a, a regular pay per view card. You know, UFC 300 is something special. And that's also an opportunity for Justin Gaethje to appear on UFC 300. Like everyone was saying this on my stream the other day about Jamal Hill not taking the fight, that he should have waited. There's only one UFC 300, guys, and if he's getting the chance to be on it, you know, that's something different, man. That's that's kind of a legacy fight, and it's also, you know, a big showcase for yourself. You can really make yourself kind of a star fighting on UFC 300. So I don't think any of these fighters are going to regret fighting on the card. You know, even the losers, I don't think they're going to regret it at all. I, th I think they I think they all knew they made the right decision. I meant if Hill loses to Yuri, they'll give him Rackage or Roundtree since he would go down the rankings. Oh, okay. Sorry, Anakin Skywalker. Got you, bro. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, I could see them even doing... Um, yeah, I could see them doing Roundtree. Ra Roundtree would be good, a good matchup for Hill uh, if Hill loses. True, Justin is a G for taking the fight. His brain lost, though. Yeah. Yeah, man, CTE for sure. Sad seeing that, you know. Sad seeing that. I don't want to see any fighters getting brain damage, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's just a reality we got to live with. You know, it's it's 100% proven fighters are getting brain damage. Even fighters that aren't, like, known for brawling, even just from, you know, doing their regular sparring sessions, and, you know, the, the regular fights, they're getting brain damage early on into their careers. There was a fighter, there was a Bellator fighter who died a couple of years ago from, like, a car wreck. Um, he was, like, 25 or 26. can't remember the guy's name, but they did an autopsy on him. And they found that he already had CTE. He already had CTE. And he was, like, 25 or 26 and only had, like, 10 pro fights. I don't even think he had been knocked out or anything yet. Or even TKO'd or anything like that. And so just from... Just from his 10 fights and the sparring that he did, he already had CTE. And I don't even think he had been knocked out yet officially in his career. Like had a knockout loss. So, you know, just fact of the, you know, just a fact of fighting that they have brain damage. 100%. Evan, what's up, buddy? What's up? Yeah, we're back. Yes, sir. We are back. I said I'm going to start streaming more regularly again. I mean it. And, uh, you know, the only way for you guys to know that is for me to just keep streaming. So, you know, talk is cheap. So, yeah, I'm going to be on here a lot more. I'm actually in the process of making a schedule, um, a stream schedule that I'm going to post of when I'm going to be on. Sorry, guys, my dog's in here with me, and she's making a lot of noise. Ah. <sighs> Mr. Boats and Logs himself. I like that nickname for Eben better than Hemothy. That's a way better nickname. Mr. Boats and Logs himself. <laughs> Mr. Boats and Logs. That's the fucking name for Eben right there. Jalen Turner trying to do the walk-off KO hurt me. Oh, dude, that was, that's that got to be the lowest IQ moment in recent MMA history. That's lower IQ than Michael Chandler's fights. Like, that's even, uh, that's even, I made that comparison the other day, and I've thought about it more. Chandler hasn't been that stupid yet. He's going to be kicking himself in the ass for, like, for, like, a year doing that stupid shit. <laughs> like, every other walk-off KO, like, Sean O'Malley hit one a couple years ago um, against Eddie Wineland. Mark Hunt used to do him all the time. After they knock down their opponent, 
they looked at him for like a second or two to make sure they weren't getting back up as they're kind of walking away. Jalen Turner completely turns around, walks the other way, doesn't look back at Money Moicano, just assumes he's out. Bro. Boy. <laughs> oh my God, that was so dumb. That was so stupid, man. Yeah, you think it's, yeah. Yeah, it was a hard night for us, us Justin Gaethje fans, but Gaethje never had a, a moment in the fight where he could have finished it and then just simply chose not to. I imagine being a, a Jalen Turner fan has got to be fucking tough right now because he should have won that fight. <laughs> yeah, he should have won that fight. I've been watching the last 10 seconds of the BMF fight so much, it's more than the actual actual length of the fight. <laughs> That's how much Evans watched the last 10 seconds. It was insane. It was insane, man. You think they should put Ian, Gary, and Karen on the Connor card? <laughs> Who the hell's Karen? You think they should put Ian, Gary, and Karen on the Connor card? Is that, a, is that some sort of joke? No, I'm not... Uh, that's gotta be some sort of joke. I'm just not picking up on it. Ian, Gary, and Karen. Who the hell's Karen? Moicano got damn lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Did he? Or is Jalen Turner just not very smart? Max would chin Armand easy, to be honest. He could. He could. Max has the skills on the feet. Aaron, what's up? Nice to see you in here. Nice to see you in here. I've been pretty good. How have you been? Haven't talked to you in a while. Karen Covington? Oh, Colby. Oh, talking about, talking about old Colby. Okay. I was like, who the fuck is who the fuck is Karen? Are we talking about Michelle Watterson? Michelle Watterson's got that Karen haircut. Uh, Colby and... Bro, that would honestly be... It, Colby and uh, Ian Ian on the McGregor Chandler card. Imagine that press conference, man. Ian Gary would get cooked. Ian Gary is definitely no show in that press conference. So, no, probably not. I I would love to see that. The UFC will not do that though. There's no way in hell Ian Gary comes to that comes to that press conference. The gang's all here. Yeah, the gang is all here, man. The homies are all here. Oh, and here's Mason. Ooh. Here's Mason. The the chat spammer himself. <laughs> What's up, Mason? Nice to have you in here, buddy. Gamrot wants to fight Charles next. That's a good that's a good matchup. I think Charles will win that. I, I think Charles' submission ability is too dangerous, but you never know, man. Gamrot's fighting style is very uh conservative. He may not open himself up for a submission. Karen is the name some nerds call Kobe. Literally no one calls him that besides Bum Law. Yo, speaking of Bilal, what the fuck is going on at Welterweight? Like, what's going on there, man? I, I know there's going to be a Manchester card or a, a London card uh, coming up here in a, a couple months. I think 304. You'll see 304, so like August time. But like, what's what's going on, man, with fucking Bilal? Like, what's going on with him? He is, the, you know, like him or not, he is the number one contender at Welterweight. He should be fighting Leon. Like, I, I feel like, you know, we're, everyone's talking about Chandler sitting out a while. Let's keep in mind here, Bilal hasn't fought in like a year. When? I think it was 288. Bilal last fought. I'm going to look this up. I just want to make sure I'm right. Bilal, forget the name, Muhammad. Uh, yeah, 288. It was in May of last year. So that's coming up on a year. He's been out for a year and does not does not have any fights announced, man. People talking about Chandler sitting out, man. Just saying, the law's been sitting out longer. Seems like it, at least you know, at least Chandler's like waiting around for the Connor fight. You know, like Leon, honest to God, has other options. There's other contenders in that division: Jack Della Maddalena, Shavkat. Even Ian Gary, like there really are other worthy title contenders. Like Bilal's got to make something happen, man. He's just gonna get forgotten, forgotten about. Justin Gaethje got knocked the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. 
That's still my boy, though. It's still my boy. And Chris Weidman's dad. Jamal Hill, Poetan was destructive KO. Yes, it was, Mason. That was crazy to watch. Evan has the one and only Colby fan left. Who do you want him to fight next? <laughs> Saying Evan's the last Colby Covington fan. Oof. Mason, I missed you, brother. I missed you coming in here spamming the chat. I wish UFC had a Dublin card for Gary. I wouldn't mind them going back to Dublin. Aaron says, I've been doing great. I missed a lot of your streams. I usually go to bed after cards. I notice that sometimes you hop on and stream. Yeah, I've, I've been doing that the last uh, like couple months, but I'm back to regular streaming now. I'm actually about to put out a schedule uh, as a community post on the channel. Let you guys know when I'm going to be streaming again. Imagine ducking Bilal. Yeah, that's on it. That's on. Just saying that out loud makes me kind of chuckle. <laughs> Leon versus Bilal will be in Manchester. I'm confident. Leon's definitely fighting in Manchester. But honest to fucking God, bro, they might just skip Bilal. They might just skip him. They, they really might. Because really, none of the fans are really rallying behind him. If, if Bilal was a little bit more likable, right? And got the fans behind him saying like, hey, this guy really deserves a title shot. You know, the UFC would probably listen to that. But the fans just do not take to him at all. Being the backup fighter at 296 was Bilal's title shot. He needs at least two more wins. Nah, he's got to go back to the contender series and prove that he can he can join the UFC again. Bilal is on an eight or a nine fight win streak, so I'd say he deserves a title shot. <laughs> yeah, he probably does. Skyburner says, I think Bilal forgets he's the number one contender. Never forget Sean Brady getting TKO'd by Bilal. <laughs> yeah. That's the only Bilal Muhammad finish I can think of. What are, let me, I, I got his record pulled up right now. Let's. Oh my God. His last finish, bro. I'm not even shitting you guys. His last finish before Sean Brady was Augusto Montano. At UFC Fight Night 94 in 2016. <laughs> Holy shit. And he had a lot of wins in between those two fights. He had, God, how many wins did he have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He had 11 wins in the UFC in between those two fights. Oh, no, no, no. I missed a submission. I missed a submission. At UFC 242, he, he submitted... Takashi Sato? I don't even know who that is. Okay. So, no, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, Bilal, so it looks like Bilal gets a finish about every four years. <laughs> That's crazy. Come here. What are you doing? Sorry, guys. My dog's whining. All righty. Bilal didn't even, he didn't even get a ton of, he didn't even get a ton of finishes on the regional scene. Damn. And he, he actually used to fight in Bellator too. I never knew that. Bilal is a veteran. A Bellator veteran. Hmm. Cool, cool stuff.
Evan's been working out. Aaron asked Evan if he's been working out. The answer is yes. 15 weeks in, 60 workouts. I'm doing great on the grind. Diet is trash, but I'll take it slow and work on it. Love that for you, Evan. Yeah, the diet, no, the diet does matter, but the fact that you are staying consistent with your workouts, brother, is amazing. That really is great. That's great to hear that. Being consistent with it, that's a tough thing to do. Yeah, Bilal, Bilal Muhammad's last finish was two, UFC 242 in 2019. Before that, it was uh, some fight night in 2016. <laughs> yeah, he, he, gets a, he gets a finish about every four years. And in between those, those finishes, he has a ton of decision wins. In my opinion, Leon isn't much of a draw either. Bilal has 11 total wins by decision, and Leon has 10. Yeah, Leon's not really a draw either. Leon had a big moment knocking out Usman the way he did in that first, well, their second fight, technically. But outside of that, Leon doesn't really... Leon doesn't really give, give the fans a whole lot. Like, his personality is very conservative. His fight style is very conservative. Like, it's... Leon's a very slow-paced sniper that doesn't really have a lot of power. Like him and him and Bilal are very similar in that regard. They're both very conservative with their personality and their fighting style. It's it's both. Because like fighters don't have to have finishing ability to be stars. Like look at Chael Sonnen. You know, look at Colby. You know, like Colby doesn't finish a ton of fights. Chael Sonnen didn't finish a ton of fights, but they both had the personality. You know, yeah, yeah. Leon and Bilal are—they're both lacking quite a bit. Like that—that that will be a very boring title fight. At least the build-up will be. The actual fight might be might be amazing. It's always those fights that people think are gonna suck or really good. Um, the fight itself might be great, but the build-up to that would just be would be nothing. Leon and Bilal, like they're they're not gonna talk trash. They're not gonna, you know. Bilal, the leap year goat. <laughs> Dang, just realized we had no welterweights at UFC 300. Yeah, no welterweights at all. Bilal needs to go f full heel. He's so boring. That wouldn't be a bad move for him. He kind of tries to, but doesn't really commit to it. It's weird. Like he was saying that his that his legacy is just as good as Usman's and GSP's. Like his what he's done, like his win streak and everything. But which kind of it seemed a little heelish, but then he, he didn't really commit to that. But like he says that kind of stuff, but doesn't commit to it. Leon couldn't finish old man Cerrone and gotten rocked by Diaz. <laughs> Girth, what's up, bro? <laughs> what's up, my guy? Hope all is well. Hope all is well with you too, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't stream there for a while. Uh, I'm getting back into it now. Getting back into it now, man. I wish Diaz would have finished Leon. Just imagine an alternative universe where Diaz is fighting for the title. Oh my god. I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen that. Law is definitely a crybaby, but he gets so much disrespect. Yeah, I agree with that statement. He just doesn't give the fans. There's really not a lot of reasons to like him. You know, he he's he just. I think another thing that that really. That really doesn't do him any favors for the fans is he's so desperate for a title shot. It's so obvious how desperate he is. And. Like, I know all the fighters obviously win a title shot, right? Like, that's why they're fighting. Of course, they they of course they want to fight for belts. But, like, that's, like, all he talks about. Every interview, you know, all of his, like, a lot of his social media posts, it's, it's like he's so desperate for the title shot. You know, title fight, title fight, title fight. It's all he, it's kind of like in his interviews, it's, like, all he talks about. And he just, he just doesn't give a ton of his personality. He just doesn't give you a ton of reasons to like him. Like, really get behind him, you know? So. 
Never forget, Leon refused to swing and bang with Cerrone when he got prompted to. Jerome Holloway showed us that only a BMF would do that. <laughs> Jerome Holloway. I, I love that that name is sticking around. I love that. Well, that's his real name, isn't it? Jerome. Good old Jerome. I think, yeah, that's like his... Isn't Max like his middle name? Or maybe Jerome's his middle name. No, yeah, Max is his middle name. That's what I thought. I thought I thought Jerome was his first name. <laughs> Jerome Holloway. Just seems weird saying that. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all that Leon that Leon did that. That was of course that's what Leon's gonna do. Leon Leon's very safe fighter. Very, very safe. Yeah, so true. It'll suck super bad because if he gets it and loses, then what? He puts all of his eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I think with Bilal. He he doesn't really give a, give you anything else. Like what what can you tell me about Bilal other than he's a welterweight, he fights in the UFC, he's Muslim, and he gets a considerable amount of decision wins. I'm not even clowning on him, but like really, like what what do you know about Bilal? Like what does he tell us, you know? Like I, there's just not a lot to his personality. Same with same with Leon, but at least Leon's the champion, you know. You know, like Bilal just there's just not there's just not a ton of stuff there for him. Benil was in the same situation and never got the title shot. Yeah. But at least Benil Darius had more of a fun fighting style. He was a little bit no, more known for having fun fights. Uh, like that fight with Drakkar Close. That was one of the most insane fights I've ever seen. Insane finishing sequence. Like, Benil is kind of known for having more of a fun fighting style, at least. Even though his personality is kind of lacking a little bit. You know, he, he had something going there. Something going there, you know. But, like, Bilal just... His fighting style is just not... It's just not that fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm really not even shitting on the guy. I'm really not even shitting on him. I'm not trying to clown on him or anything. Just, you know, not a, not a lot going on there with him. And now Benio is on a downfall. Yeah. Yep. Seriously, Evan Jerome just legitimized the BMF belt in my eyes. Not only did did Max Holloway make that belt way better. The UFC, I don't know if you guys picked up on this during during the fight. And during the buildup, the UFC is treating the BMF belt like an actual undisputed title now. Ga Justin Gaethje was marked the champion on the like the the little thing, like the little like the little uh, breakdown of all the the main card of UFC 300. It said, you know, it had the little C, the gold C next to Gaethje's name. When they were introducing the fighters in the ring, they Bruce Buffer announced Gaethje. Uh, as the undisputed, you know, UFC BMF champion. And they're actually talking about putting that belt back up for grabs now. Like, they're actually treating it like a real belt. And that's how it should have always been treated. I, I, I love that. If they if they actually treat the BMF belt like a real title and give the, you know, give the BMF, the BMF champion pay-per-view points, you know, treat him like a champion, you know, like, I love that. I love that. That makes the belt fun. Makes it feel like they're actually fighting for something. Kaiushish, what's up, man? He tells us to remember his name, LOL, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I know you've been gone for a while, so you're kind of out of the loop, but Aaron and I are an item now. <laughs> I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. <laughs> Aaron, is that true? <laughs> this goon. This goon might be too on the nose, but Jerome by Mick Jenkins and Joey Badass would be sick. What? Man, I must be all out of the loop on everything like Girth just says, because I don't know who Mick, Mick Jenkins and Joey Badass. Who the fuck are those guys? Oh, Noah, back, back at throwing shade at Colby Covington. Also, Karen needs to retire. What's his marquee win? The guy who lost to Jake Paul twice? Wolf, have Bilal retire him or something? 
<laughs> bro noah is going for the jugular of eben right now man he's got the he's he's going for fucking he's coming out for blood talking all this shit about about colby oof there <laughs> eben Eb, you know eben's just destroying the keyboard right now eben is eben is typing up some shit aaron says please ignore girth got you got you girth is a just a goon how does the bmf belt move into different weight classes it moves just you know it, it'll move around just naturally maybe it'll stay at featherweight for a while we got a bmf belt before a 165 division i think with the the noah smith you got a good point there brother they need to do one six do a 165 division a 175 division right so add 165 add 175 we've got 185 do a 195 then a 205 and then like a 225 or something and then anything above 226 and above should be heavyweight i think that would be amazing i would love that i would love that if we had more weight divisions All right, Girth, chill on out there, buddy. Chill on out. <laughs> yeah, what WMC just said there, Aaron, with bulks or weight cuts, yeah. The, that, that belt will be able to move around some. And then, you know, if, if a fighter retires like Masvidal with it, they could just take it away and just reintroduce it. You know, just just like they did with uh, Gaethje and, and Poirier. Don't know how much of a hot take this is, but 165 is a stupid idea. The only div they can add with it being pointless is division in between light heavyweight and heavyweight. I mean, you know, that's that's your opinion, Skyburners. I like my idea for just adding in all the divisions. Um, I think it gives fighters more options. Because, you know, like 170 to 185 is a big jump. And then 185 to 205, man, that's a huge jump. Huge. I, I like the divisions just being 10-pound increments. 10 pounds, 10 pounds. Keep it simple. Waiting on Foldy. Evans waiting on Colby fight announcement. Hopefully he beats Ian Gary to a pulp. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a great fight. Colby and Ian, Ian Gary. Fun buildup, fun fight. Yeah, I, I think they do that. That's a big fight for both guys, too. And in the meantime, they could do Shavkat and Jack Della Maddalena, and then Bilal fights Leon. I think that's what you do at the top of welterweight there. And then we do Steven Thompson versus MVP. Why not? Why not? And that leaves Gilbert Burns out in the mix somewhere, but that's fine because he just lost again. So, you know, he's going to have to fight down. Um, you know, maybe someone towards like the bottom 10 for Gilbert. Having 165, 70, and 75 seems a bit cluttered. Maybe they move welterweight to 175. In that case, have a new division at 165. Yeah, they'd have to get rid of 170. If they did a 165 and a 175, just have the fighters from 170 e choose. They either go down to 65 or they go up to 75. You know, it's up to them. But yeah, we'd get rid of 170. 170 would go away. In, in my, you know, my little fantasy world. Lucas Tracy has a good take on not having a 165 that I agree with. What's that take? Guys, if you'd like to tell me that take, I'd love to hear it because I, I haven't I haven't seen that Lucas Tracy video. I don't know what's what's the drawback from it though. If we introduce 165 and a 175 and just take away 170, I don't, you know, I don't see a big problem with that, but Maybe maybe the maybe the drawback is like all the fighters' bodies are used to 170, so they'd have to, you know, do a little bit of adjustment for their weight. But I don't know. That fell is too much like boxing with all the pity belts. Hey, <laughs> let's give Luke a Michael Morales. Oh man, Luke is Luke is just not looking that good anymore, man. I'm worried for that guy. I think I think Luke is a cautionary tale 
of fighters that weaponize their chin, like Tony Ferguson. That fighting style is great until it's not. When you rely on your chin, taking standing up to punishment, you leave you leave a lot of technical openings for your opponents, right? Think about like Jessica Andrade, a fighter that's known for that, who's having some issues with her chin now. Tony Ferguson was known for that, right? I'm worried that's going to happen to Yuri one day. His chin's okay for now, but that but the day that it's not, that's probably going to be it for Yuri, you know. And that's that's kind of what Luke was known for, having a chin of steel, right? A granite chin, you know. And that's all great and all, but you know. Girth, I will use my mod powers to ban you. Girth, don't fuck around with Aaron, man. Don't mess around with her. She's a mod. As much as I want Tony... Oh, hey, Jorge, what's up, man? Nice to see you in here again. As much as I want Tony to win one more, but he has to retire. He's taken so much damage already. I, I, I know what you mean, man. I'd like to see Tony win one more, too. I really, really want him to retire more than anything. I want him to retire about 25 times more than I want him to than I want to see him win one more fight. It's it's done. He's like 40 years old now. He's lost what seven in a row. I I, I don't want to see that guy fighting anymore. And it, not gonna lie, it kind of pisses me off that the UFC keeps offering him fights. Cut his ass. Let him go. Let him go. If he wants to go fight somewhere else, it's on him. But uh, you, as the UFC, should not be offering that man any more fights. He's a ghost of his former self. And give Holland um, Zaleski Dos Santos. That'd be a good fight. Did you mean Zaleski Dos Santos? Yeah, Zaleski Dos Santos. Elizu Zaleski Zotan. Yeah, weird name. I just, I like, I, I think Zaleski Dos Santos sounds cool by itself. Yeah, that guy's dangerous, man. He's the one, um, he's the one that beat Benoit St. Denise, isn't he? Zaleski Dos Santos. And he just had that good fight with Hanat that went to a draw. That was, that, that fight was a war. Actually, Anakin Skywalker, I, I like that matchup, bro. Zaleski Dos Santos uh, in Holland. That, that'd be a good fight. And Holland needs to fight down. Holland is one of the fighters, bro. I love Holland, but I fucking hate. My voice is cracked there. I fucking hate, man. I fucking hate when he when he realizes he can't win the fight that he's in. He just kind of stops trying. Like halfway through the second round, he he realizes he, he's not going to get the finish. He's not going to win the decision. So he just he just kind of starts fucking around, right? And then so in the, so then in the pro, post fight press conference he could just say well you know I didn't really try so you know I lost but I didn't really try so you know if I had tried I would have won like I fucking hate that man I like Kevin Holland's personality and when he wins fights they're fun but when he loses fights you you just look at him and you're like oh you're not really you're not really trying because you know you're gonna lose you know it's okay to lose you're gonna grow from the loss it's okay. But he, it's like he doesn't try, so he could say, well, you know, you know, I didn't try, so, it, you know, does it really count? That I hate that about Kevin Holland. JDM versus Leon, Volk versus Ilya, and Islam. Rob versus DDP, and Ty versus John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there's Skyburners. Australia low-key has taken over. There's a lot of big fighters out of Australia. A lot of fun fighters out of Australia, too. We need Tony versus Felder or Guida. <laughs> nah. I, I'm i not going to... Felder would kill Tony. Uh, and I think I think Clay Guida would, would comfortably win that fight, too. Clay Guida is like the same age, but he's not in the same physical decline as Tony. Clay Guida can still win some fights, like some unranked fights. He can still give those guys trouble. I mean, shit, he just gave uh, Joaquin Silva um, a really tough, hard fight, and Joaquin Silva gave Armand a really tough fight in his fight before that. Let's not forget, Joaquin Silva rocked Armand. He almost finished him at one point, so... 
you know, Clay Guida, Clay Guida is fine to keep fighting. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't want to see him versus Tony. I, th I think, I think he'd kind of fuck up Tony. Aaron says he mentioned in his live stream today. I don't remember, but he mentioned that the division wouldn't be as stacked or talented or filled and it would spread that out. It's like that for flyweight. Now I'm talking about women's flyweight. I, I see that point. I see that point, but I just, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to disagree with that because I think there's enough talented men's 170 fighters. And you got to think about too, some of the bigger lightweights that might be, might feel like they're a little bit too small for 170 are going to come up. You know, like the Jalen Turners, right? Even though, let's be honest, Jalen Turner could definitely fight a welterweight now. Uh, he just likes being a weight bully. But, you know, like, like there are going to be other divisions that are going to also help those help those divisions fill up. You know, maybe some really small 185ers might want to come down, like Robert Whitaker, you know? I think Whit Whitaker's fine at middleweight, but, like, he used to fight at welterweight. He's a little bit small at middleweight, so maybe he wants to come down to 175, you know? Like, it's not just 170 that's going to fill up 165 and 175. It's also going to be lightweight and middleweight, too, that are, that are going to have fighters come down and fill that division up. And let's also not mention, too, that the UFC is constantly looking for new fighters to keep these events full of fighters, right? They're, they're having 40-plus events a year. So they've, they've got to keep the roster full. So they can also just sign sign new fighters. Sorry, I guess, shit, guys. I got to get caught up on the chat here. I'm so bad about fucking, fucking off with this stuff. Let Tony die in the cage like the warrior he is. Dude isn't even in his prime yet. <laughs> Crazy. I think it should be Patty RDA, to be honest. Moicano and Green should fight each other. If not, go up. Both coming off wins at 300. Hmm. Patty versus RDA. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Andis, what was your take on the Charles versus Armand fight? I thought Armand won that. I, I understand the, the argument that, you know, Charles was trying to finish the fight. The problem was Charles only really, you could really only say Charles only won 40 seconds of that third round. He, he lost the rest of that round. So... I, I get the, you know, I get what they're saying, but I, I thought Armand won that fight. Aaron says, are we playing games tonight? We can. We can. I'm not going to bring up the scoreboard, but I can, like, I could, we could fucking play some games. Just not keep score. What if Connor gets a title shot before Bilal? <laughs> I could see them fucking doing that. <laughs> Why? Because Chandler, Chandler and fucking uh, Connor's at 170. Watch Connor beat Chandler at 170, and then they throw him in there with Leon. <laughs> oh my God! Hey, with Connor McGregor, you can't ever you can't ever rule anything out. The UFC will bend over backwards for him. Bobby Green versus Matt for Volup would be a fun matchup. Would be a fun matchup. Rackage is using the old I got staff excuse, same as Benoit St. Denis, like that changes the fact that they got sent to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, it definitely affects them a bit, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them using that using that excuse. Yeah, let's go ahead and play some games, actually. Let's go ahead and play some games. <clears throat> So, um, let's go ahead and play the Guess the Fighter game. You guys all remember that. I'm going to think of a fighter. You guys ask me a series of yes or no questions that I will then answer. Okay? Has to be a yes or no question. First person to correctly guess the fighter wins. Very simple. Very fun. Let's go ahead and start playing right now. Guys, I am thinking of a fighter and Skyburners, before you guess it, no, it is not Eddie Alvarez. It's really not. But go ahead and start asking me questions, guys.
Nope, not Eddie Alvarez. It's not Eddie. Aaron says, are they active? No, they are not. It's not Justin. It's not Max. Noah asks, are they ranked? No. Did they did not fight at UFC 300. It is not Chris Cyborg, even though I do be thinking about her. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is the fighter Brazilian? No. It is not Armon. Uh, they are not trans. And they are not active. This is not an active fighter. This is not a current active fighter. It's not Eddie. One million percent, guys. It is not Eddie Alvarez. Eben says, is it Chael P. Sonnen? I wish it was, but no, I was not thinking of Chael. Skyburners asks, are they retired? Yes, this is a retired UFC fighter. Not Anderson Silva. It is a former champion, asked Skyburners. Yes, this is a retired former champion. Thinking about Cyborg, huh? Is it Vanderlei? <laughs> That's a good one. That was a good one, Kyle. She's no, not Vanderlei. <laughs> that was fucking funny. What weight division? It has to be a yes or no question, Jorge. It has to be a yes or no question. So, like, you could say, you know, is it lightweight? And I, you know, I'd say yes or no to that. Got to be a yes or no question. Yeah, not Girth Williams. Former UFC fighter says WMC. Yes, it is not Michael Bisping. Did they fight in lightweight or above? No, they did not. They did not fight in lightweight or above. It is not Chuck Liddell, not Donald Cerrone, not Mark Coleman. Aaron says, are they in the Hall of Fame? I believe they are. Yes. Don Juan, what's up, man? Nice to have you in here. Uh, It has to be a yes or no question. Has to be a yes or no question. Not Randy. It's not Rampage. Did they fight in welterweight? No, they did not fight in lightweight or above. Not Rampage, not Forrest. It is not Eddie Alvarez. I've said that about seven fucking times. <laughs> it's not Eddie. It's not Randy. Aaron asks, are they dead? No, they are very much alive. Not Matt Hughes, not Aldo, not Mighty Mouse, not Frankie L- uh, Egger. Um, Hennen? Says Skyburners, R-E-N-I-N, Renan? You mean Hennen Brow? Uh, if you mean Hennen Brow, no, not Hennen Brow. Uh, not Frankie Egger. It is not the California Kid, Uriah Faber. Not GSP. It's not Poetan. This is a retired UFC champion that fought below lightweight. Now, what does below lightweight means? It means every weight class below 145 pounds. So that could be men or women. It is not Habib, not BJ Penn. Noah asks, are they American? No, they are not. This is not an American. It's not Dillashaw. It's not BJ Penn. No, WMC. Nope. Wasn't Dillashaw. Noah Smith. My boy. He gets it. Winner, winner. Motherfucking chicken dinner, baby. Yoana. I don't even like saying her last name. We're just going to say Yoana. Yep. It was Yoana. I was thinking of Yoana. Good job, my man, Noah Smith. Good shit, homie. Good shit. Good job, brother. Yeah, I was thinking about Joanna. Dubs in the chat for Noah. Let's see it. Dubs in the chat for Noah. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Girth says the first thing I said was trans and you said no. <laughs> this guy's a troll. This guy thinks it. I still think it was Tito. Yeah, maybe I was thinking about Tito too. All right, y'all. Dubs in the chat for Noah. All right. 
All right, good job, Noah. Let's move on. Let's move on, guys. I'm thinking of another fighter. I'm thinking of another fighter, y'all. The booby women. I see you in this. <laughs> Evan, you're funny. All right, y'all. I'm thinking of another... Another fighter. Let's see those questions. WMC asked, man or woman? It is a woman. That wasn't yes or no, but I'll I'll be nice with that. I'll be nice with that. It's a woman. Just thinking of women tonight, man. Thinking of these female fighters. L Noah, because you didn't type out her last name properly. <laughs> we can, we can cut Noah some slack for that. It's not Eddie. It's not it's not Eddie Alvarez. Aaron asks, is it male? Uh, it's you know no. It, this is a female. Were they in Team Alpha Male? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. It's not Eddie Alvarez. It's not Parker Porter, <laughs> the legend Parker Porter. He's become such a meme, poor guy. Has to be Braxton Smith. Uh, it's definitely not Braxton Smith. UFC fighter, yes. It is not Cyborg. Mm -hmm. Good guess, though, Noah. No, Noah, bro. Noah's out here with the good guesses tonight. No, I'm always thinking about Cyborg. No, it wasn't Cyborg. Not Nunez. Not Valentina. Not Grasso. Skyburners gets it right. The king is back. It was Kayla Harrison. Skyburners, my boy. Good job. Good fucking job, dude. They don't call him the goat for, for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Skyburners is the goat of the guessing the fighter game. My man knows his shit. He knows how to guess. <laughs> Loopy Godinez. Oh, I, I'd be thinking about Loopy Godinez a lot too. Tatiana. Mommy Milker's Pena. Oof. Speaking of uh, speaking of old Juliana Pena, what the fuck's going on with her? Is she ever going to come back and fight anyone? What's she doing? I haven't heard anything about her in a while. She hasn't won in what feels like years. I think her last win was the Nunez upset. That was in 2021. What's she doing? Yeah, Kayla Harrison. Aaron says that's not a woman. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. Chill, chill. That's not a woman. <laughs> Please don't think of Yerna Yonderobi, bro, that I, I don't like being mean to people on stream, so I'm, I'm not going to talk shit about fighters, but trust me, I am I am not thinking about Vierna Yonderobi, however you say her name. I know I know that girl. I'm, I'm not thinking about her ever. <laughs> Let's do Pena versus Harrison. That would honestly be kind of dope. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. But I also wouldn't mind seeing Kayla Harrison just fuck up Juliana Pena. Or not Juliana Pena, fucking Raquel Pennington. Kayla's exciting. She she's she gives she breathes some fucking life into that damn division. Women's 135 is garbage. So it's it's nice having a fun fighter in that division. Bro goes back to the trannies. That's crazy. <laughs> Girth, you're a goon, brother. You're a goon. All right, y'all. Let's move on. Let's move on, guys. Let's move it along here. I am thinking of another fighter. I'm thinking of a fighter, guys. I'm thinking of another fighter. Go ahead and start asking me. There's yes or no questions, baby. Let's go. Let's fucking go. All right. All right. It is not Eddie Alvarez. <laughs> um, Noah asks, are they active? Yes, they are. Uh, not a male. 
Jamal Hamburger Helper Hill. <laughs> Hamburger Helper Hill. That's funny. I like that name. That just rolls off the tongue. Uh, not a retired fighter. Remember when I said I could save women's 135? Yeah, my hopes and dreams have been crushed out now that Kayla's out there. She's so strong. Yeah, Aaron, you'd get you'd get fucked up by Kayla Harris. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, it's not Dustin Poirier. This uh, this is an active female fighter. It's not uh, it's not Big Tom. Aaron asked, did they fight at UFC 300? No, no. It's not Wei Lee, not Yan, not Grasso, not a male. Is it Izzy? <laughs> it's not. It's not Adesanya. Good guess though. Kayla looks, looks like she weighs more on fight night than Adesanya. She might, honestly. Not Nunez, not Valentina, not Yan Xiaonan. WMC asks, is it a UFC fighter? No, it is not. Does she fight in flyweight? No, she does not fight in the flyweight division. Not Raquel, not Amanda Lemoche. Not Myra Bueno Silva. It is not Raquel Pennington. Good old Rocky. Molly, it's not Molly McCann, not Macy Barber. Uh, they are Brazilian. They are Brazilian. Izzy counts as a woman. <laughs> Motherfucking girth gets it right. I was thinking about Cyborg. I was thinking about good old, good old Chris Justino Cyborg. Yes. I stayed I stayed with the uh, the tranny theme, you know what I'm saying? The the goat Chris Cyborg. Let's throw up a let's throw up a Cyborg picture. Girth, good job Girth. Dubs in the chat for Girth. Where is my Cyborg picture at? Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Whoa, what the fuck? Why is it so big? Shit's huge. That's what she said. <laughs> All right. Bam. A little bit smaller. There you go. You guys are welcome. Y'all are welcome. Yeah, good job, Girth. Good job, Girth. Channel members can spam the uh, the cyborg emoji. <laughs> That's three trannies in a row, Leon voice. <laughs> <laughs> That one's for you, Eben. That one's for you, brother. All right, we're getting towards the end of the stream now. So if there's, I, I really like doing this because I, I get to really interact with you guys. If there's a picture or a meme or some shit that you guys want to see that is appropriate, it's it can't be too crazy, right? Uh, just let me know in the chat and I'll, I'll consider putting it up there. Some stupid goofy meme or some dumb picture, right? Wait, whatever you guys might want to see. Uh, I'm sure Aaron's going to want to see the Dana Tito kiss. That's a very popular one. So just throw it in the chat. If, uh, you know, and maybe I'll throw it up there. And we'll just talk some shit. But yeah, we're getting, getting, a, starting to wind down the stream a little bit. So, yeah, I, li I like doing this. I like ending off on these, on these goofy ass pictures and conversations. Skyburner says, like the stream, by the way. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. Go ahead and like that stream, please. Helps me out a ton. Helps me out a ton, guys. Can you read comments on Jamal Hill's latest Instagram post? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 
Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to put it up on the screen. <laughs> Eben, that's a fucking great idea. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, hold up, give me a second. Give me a second. I gotta log into an Insta my Instagram. Wait, no, I don't. I don't think I do. I don't want to dox myself. Hold up. I want to do that, but I don't. I do not want to dox myself. Fuck. I can't even remember my Instagram shit. Ah, damn it. <laughs> there's some of those comments I can't read because there's some some certain words that uh, that I, as a white man, cannot say. I think you guys can probably figure out what that is. I actually don't have my Instagram shit saved on. <sighs> Hold up. Like the stream or girth will show you his bulge. Oof, better go ahead and like the stream. Potards, as Rigo says. Hill has changed, hasn't changed his bio yet though. Watching Jamal Hill trash talk go wrong. Eben, dude, the toxic POA cells have emerged. Aaron's calling them POA cells. Holy shit. Alden Day, hey, what's up, buddy? Who did a worse job of backing up the trash talk, Hill or Covington? <sighs> That's tough to say. I'm not gonna lie, because I feel like Colby wasn't even trying to win that fight. There, there wasn't a moment in that fight where I was convinced that Colby was actually trying to win the fight. Hill at least went out there and tried, I felt like tried to actually engage. I Colby kind of ran away that whole fight, so... Uh, honestly, Alden Day, that's tough to say, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. You got Col Colby also wasn't fighting Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira is a very aggressive striker. You know? Like, Colby went in there against Leon and basically didn't do anything until the fifth round. Aaron says, I got you. Hold up. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to try to add us. I'm, I'm going to try to add something on here. Hold up. Let me, let me fuck around with something. All right, you guys should be able to see that. Let me crop this. Oh, shit. Okay, you guys can kind of see that, right? Let's make this bigger. It still looks like shit. Okay. Well, we can, you guys can kind of see that. Wait, these are like... Where's the funny comments? Be more humble next time, brother. Chama. Oh, I can't even read that many of them. Fuck, that kind of sucks. See, yeah, I don't want to sign into my Instagram. Okay, we'll fuck. We'll fuck with that later.
we'll fuck with that later i'll make that look better and we'll, we'll do that next time yeah he might as well been over and let league on fucking jesus christ no <laughs> Yeah, I don't want dog on Colby, but yeah, that was that was a tough fight to watch, man. You heard of Justin starting in OnlyFans? Ju Gage, my boy Gaethje better not do that. He better not do that, man. Gaethje better not do that. John of Anitibus, what's up, brother? You think Poetan can actually make it to 301, even though the promotion probably won't make it happen? I think he could. He didn't take any damage. He's already had a training camp, right? So he's, you know... Now, his training camp for... Ankalaev would be a lot different than a training camp for Hill, but he has he is in shape, right? He's been training. Um so yeah, I think he could make 301 if the promotion wanted, but they, they probably won't do that. WC, my neighbor's tree is growing into my fence and hanging over my property line. Am I allowed to trim it? Yeah, you definitely are if it's on your property. I mean, maybe like your local laws, Aaron, might be a little bit different, like whichever your state state you're in. But yeah, I think most states you're allowed to. Yeah. Who do you think they'd give him? I I really don't think they'd give him Ankalaev. Ankalaev's just coming off Ramadan. Magomed Ankalaev was actually offered the fight at UFC 300. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't think they offered it to him, but they did. And he didn't want to do it because of Ramadan. So... Poetan will get slept by Stephen Hawking. Prove me wrong. Yeah, that's that could happen. Could happen. Stephen Hawking's dangerous, man, with that wheelchair. All right, what other what other pictures and stupid memes and shit do you guys want to see? I can't bring up the Instagram comments on Jamal Hill's Instagrams, but I will try next time, Evan. I promise. I promise. I'll get I'll get that hooked up to where I can do that. We might have to make that like on my my streaming software. I might have to make that like another uh, a different like projection than what I normally have up. But I I think I can do that. Okay, let's replace the cyborg picture with let's go with let's go with another another classic here. I'm just gonna pick something. I always like this one. Uh, this one's always funny as shit to me. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Islam reacting to Colby and Masvidal. <laughs> Aaron says she has some. Let's see him. Let's see him. If Paul of Tom were to fight at 301, a favorable matchup would be another striker. Last thing you want to do is have a short camp against Russian Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly, yeah. It had to be someone... Maybe Adesanya? I mean, I, I don't necessarily want to see that again, but yeah, it would have to be someone that both guys can kind of prepare for on a short notice thing because for Magomed and Kaliev too training for Pereira is going to be very specific right because he doesn't really want to mess around with per Pereira on the feet he doesn't so all right Aaron I'll put this up I'll put this up give me a second Give me a second, Aaron. Let me throw this up here. This is kind of funny. Aaron, Aaron's got a little meme she wants everyone to see. Bam. Let 
was that Nate Nate Diaz, Piotr Jan, and Triple G looks like. <laughs> Levi Goat, what's up, brother? My main man, it's Endis. Yeah, I'm back, dude. I'm back. Do DDP kissing his coach? Isn't that already that's already one of the memes in rotation? I mean, you can't really see it that well, so you know we'll we'll bring that up. Hold up, I gotta go into Google here and look that up. Search history is gonna look really weird. Looking up pictures of Jessica Andrade and Drickus Duplessis kissing his coach. What the fuck is this? <laughs> wow, this is this basically just looks like gay porn. <laughs> That's definitely Drickus though. Oh my god. This this photo I'm about to put up of Drickus, I think that I think that's his coach. The the one dude has an erection in the picture. This is I feel like this is definitely getting a little weird because they say the kissing thing in South Africa is just like a like a gesture of celebration or whatever. Like it's just something they do. But this, I don't know, man. This looks a little weird. This looks really weird. A little sus here. A little sus. Let me find this. Oh my god. <laughs> man, this man, give me some likes, guys. This is this is the best MMA stream on YouTube. Come on. Maybe not the best, but certainly the most uh, homoerotic. <laughs> you guys asked for it. You guys asked for it. I just I just give you guys what you want. This is the content that you guys want to see. This is why you guys come here. This is <laughs> This is why you come to this MMA stream. <laughs> Alex new emote as a meme. You know what? The the Alex the Pereira the Pereira emote that he did on Hill would actually be a great emoji for chat for this stream. Levi says that's gay. Looks pretty gay to me. But that's bro, that's that's Drickus and his coach in the gym. Take it off. I don't want to see it anymore. Hey, Jorge, you're the one you wanted this, brother. You wanted this. You wanted this, man. I'm leaving it up there. That's for you. <laughs> you want you wanted to see Drickus and his coach <laughs> in that nature. <laughs> All right, I'll replace it with something else. I'll replace it with something else. Let me find some other pictures. We'll, we'll go ahead and replace this with the best looking, in my opinion, the best looking female fighter in the UFC. Bam. The queen of violence herself. Pride month isn't until, isn't until July, buddy. Aaron, that's... <laughs> Aaron, that's that's DDP on the left. That was DDP on the left. Why is being gay a whole month, but for veterans, it's only a day? I don't know, man. I don't make these rules. It's not gay. It's just the result of steroids. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, Aaron, that's DDP on the left. I promise you. I promise you it is.
from crazy crazy gay to straight nice end is good cover <laughs> hey yeah y'all are the one that asked for these gay pictures all right the hottest is Tabitha. Most beautiful is Alexa, in my opinion. Mm, Tabitha Richie, bro, is... <laughs> she's baddie. She is... She is very good looking. And, but Alexa Grasso is like... She's like a... She's like beautiful, though. Like, well... Yeah, like, well said, man. She's like a, like a classy type of, like, beauty, you know? Thoughts on a midget UFC? Mm. I'd like to see the grappling. I'd like to see the grappling. Grappling would be interesting. How are they going to hit takedowns? It's going to be the weirdest looking takedowns you've ever seen. No, honest to God, though, I, I stand by this. I will die on this on this hill. And I'll probably end the stream on this right here. The best looking woman ever in MMA history, bro, is Gina Carano. I I will I will die on that fucking hill. Gina Carano is the best looking women's fighter we've ever had in MMA. Come on, man. Come on, man. Look at that. Look, look at that. She is beautiful. Alexa reminds me of my my ex from Mexico. I miss her sometimes. Damn, bro, that sucks. I I, I feel that. I feel that. Aaron B did billion dollar idea midgets in the UFC <laughs> that'd be crazy will Gaethje return if so will he fight when he who will he fight when he does I think he needs to do at least one more fight um Gaethje needs to do at least one more fight I don't think he's gonna want to end his career on that um if he did retire I think that would be fine the guy's had a crazy career I don't know if you guys know this about Gaethje but he has been in the top 10 in the UFC ever since he debuted. I mean, of course, he wasn't ranked in his debut, but he fought Michael Johnson in his debut, and Michael Johnson was, like, ranked number five. So Justin Gaethje has been inside the top 10 of the lightweight division his entire UFC run. Entire UFC run. Which is, I honestly think that's insane. Um, but now, when he comes back, I wouldn't mind a Charles rematch. Um, since they both lost at 300, I think that's fitting. And their first fight was a banger anyways, so why not have a fun fight again? I think we could do Poirier 3, if if they depending on how things play out. Um, Gaethje's going to want some time off. I would imagine like at least six months. So, you know, we can even do someone else in the lightweight division, like like uh, Benil Dariush, uh, if you wanted <clears throat> but I think I think Oliveira rematch or Dustin Justin three would be the way to go. Um, so yeah, I th I think he would if they do go with Oliveira. I think he'll probably lose to Oliveira again. Um, and if they if they rematch with Poirier and do a, a trilogy, I I think he would beat Poirier again. I do. But you know, I may I might be wrong. That knockout might change him forever. I mean, that is as bad of a knockout as it gets. So maybe Poirier would beat him. Give Justin Dariush as a tune-up. The thing is, I don't know if Dariush deserves that. I don't know if he deserves that, you know. But yeah, may maybe give him Dariush. I think he would beat the shit out of Dariush. I don't even think that would be very competitive. Justin fights Dustin one more time for the toe breaker or McGregor next. McGregor's an option too. I've low-key always wanted to see McGregor and, and, and Gaethje. I actually think that'd be a great fight, and they've had a good rivalry back and forth on social media. Justin and, and McGregor have. I would, I, I actually would like that too. That's the thing with Gaethje, like Gaethje, Poirier, McGregor, Charles Oliveira. That that lightweight division so much fun. I really don't care what matchup they make next. It's going to be exciting. Like that's that's why I think that's the best division in the UFC is because it's just so exciting, man. 
all of those fighters are good. They're all big names. Like every time we get a, a fight at the top of the lightweight division, I'm like a fucking kid on Christmas, dude. Like I just, I love it. I'm like, oh good, dude. I know that's gonna be a banger. It's impossible for that to be a bad fight. Unless Gamrot's in it, then it could be kind of boring. But I still like Gamrot, even though he is a boring fighter. Gaethje will be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, absolutely. All, all, of, the, all of those guys at the top of lightweight right now are going to be in the Hall of Fame. They have to be. They have to be. They've all got all-time great wins. All of them do, right? Oliveira, Poirier, Dustin. Hell, even Michael Chandler has some pretty, pretty decent wins. Connor, you know, Connor's Hall of Fame for sure. Uh, Islam, you know, all, all of those guys at the top of lightweight, they all put on good fights. You know, they're, they're all, be, they'll all be in the hall of fame. But honestly, now that I'm thinking about that, Conor McGregor and Gaethje would be fun as shit. Would be fun as shit. I actually, the more I'm thinking about that, I would actually like to see that more than Dustin Poirier three for Gaethje. They Con, Connor Connor McGregor and Justin Gaethje have had a real rivalry over the years online. They really do not like each other. And every time Gaethje wins a major fight, the the discussion that all the media bring up in the post fight press conference is Connor McGregor because every time Gaethje wins a big fight, McGregor always tweets about it. He always wants he always wants some of the attention whenever Gaethje wins a big fight. I would I would honestly love to see that. I'd love to see that. But they probably won't put that together. If it wasn't for Islam, the lightweight would be lightweight title would be constantly changing hands between the top five. That's how competitive it is. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent it would be. <clears throat> Chandler has two UFC wins, Girth. He has um he has Dan Hooker and Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson win was, you know, the front kick to the face, which was awesome, but it was the ghost of Tony Ferguson by that point. Tony had already lost three in a row. So he's got two UFC wins. So, you know, maybe, if, maybe you know, if Chandler beats Connor, um, he might be in Hall of Fame running too, just saying. I mean, but you got to think too, all the losses that Chandler's had, he's nearly beat the opponent every time. He nearly finished Poirier. He nearly finished um, Oliveira. He had Gaethje hurt in the first round. You know, so... Yeah, Chandler doesn't have the best UFC record so far, but the guy is undeniably talented. Yamra is actually an exciting fighter. Why do you think he is boring? He he just has that... He has that that slow, grindy style... He moves fast and he has good cardio, but his act like once he actually implements his takedowns, it's very slow. You know. Justin versus Connor would be amazing. Justin would go home with a fat purse too and definitely deserves it. Yeah, he'd make some money from that fight. He would. I, and I, I actually think that fight would sell really well because Gaethje's already a big name outside of Connor. You know? Like what's his what his Instagram following has to be pretty goddamn big. What's Yeah, he's got two million followers on there, so it's not as big as I thought it would be, but he's already a, a big name. Two point three million followers. How many does Poirier have? Poirier's probably got more than that. Yeah, Poirier's got almost 5 million followers, but he's already fought Connor. I wonder what Dustin Poirier's Instagram following was like before he fought Connor. You know, he had those two big fights with Connor, which really put his name out there even more. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy, Jorge. Thanks for coming out, man. 13K profit by the end of the month. That's that's great. Good for you, man. Yeah, so Ga- Gaethje, I mean, Instagram followers aren't like the only key indicator to a star, but, but come on, fans love Gaethje. And they, they know if he fights Connor, it's going to be a good fight. 
one mega win doesn't make up for an entire legacy chandler has no legacy yeah I, I see what you're saying i see what you're saying aaron i don't know i think with a couple decent wins i think chandler's in the hall of fame too you know the, the guy you, you know love him or hate him the guy has brought a lot of excitement to lightweight every time chandler fights people tune in people don't want to miss that fight dustin versus justin would be weird since it wouldn't be for the bmf belt again yeah i don't know if only justin was a better hype man they'd sell that fight so well yeah they probably would um what do you think of demir is i like watching him fight he's a good fighter he's a good fighter um he just got a big win. Who was that fucking guy he just fought? <sighs> Shit. I gotta look it up. Demir Ismagulov. He just... Who the fuck was that guy? I thought he just fought someone and won. Who's that fucking guy he just fought? I gotta look this up. This is gonna bother me if I don't fucking see who it was. I can see the guy's face. Grant Dawson. Yeah, that's right. He just lost to Grant Dawson. That was a big win for Grant Dawson. Too bad he got um, TKO'd by, well, not T even TKO'd, KO'd by Bobby Green. Demir is, is Magulov. He's beat some good fighters. For, that's right. He fought Tiago Moises. He beat Joel, Joel Alvarez as a good fighter. Joel, Joel, whatever. Joel Alvarez is kind of underrated, I think. He beat Guram Kutaledzi. Kutaledzi, however you say the guy's name. Guram, good old Guram. He proved to be kind of a... Everyone thought Guram Kutaledzi was like the next big thing. He kind of, kind of fizzled out a little bit. Girth, you don't know the power of CTE. He might be a little more edgy. Fate getting KO'd. <laughs> if any fighter has CTE, it has to be Gagey. Has to be. Chandler shouldn't make UFC Hall of Fame, maybe an MMA Hall of Fame, if that was a thing. I can agree with that. I, I can agree with that a bit more. If there was an MMA Hall of Fame, Chandler would be in it. That guy was Bellator when he was there. He was Bellator. Bellator was nothing, but pretty much nothing without him. And after they lost, after they lost Chandler, they were sold a couple years later. Funny how that works. They lose their they lose their big star and they sell a few years later. Wonder if the same thing will happen to the PFL now that Kayla Harrison's lot left. Thoughts on Costa versus Strickland? I like that fight actually, Aaron. Uh, Costas 100% does not deserve it, even though he looked pretty good against Whitaker. Uh, yeah, Costa doesn't, I don't know why Costa's getting to fight up. I hate that they're not doing Drickus versus Strickland too. I, I, I cannot stand that Adesanya is getting another title shot. I'm sick of Adesanya in the title picture. It's, it's honestly just annoying. It's annoying, right? He has his very boring yet successful title reign. He gets knocked out by Pereira. I thought the stoppage was fine. He gets his rematch with Pereira. Wins. Great KO, by the way. Loved it. That was that was like resetting his title reign, right? Like the five defenses was great. That doesn't count now because you lost. You've now you're now on your second title reign, right? You get Sean Strickland as a late replacement. You get dominated by Sean Strickland. You don't take a step forward the entire fight. You get dominated handedly, right? Then Strickland goes on to have a very close fight with Drickus Duplessis. And now Strickland's fighting Paulo Costa, who just lost to Whitaker. But, but, but Izzy gets to come back and fight for the belt. Izzy should be the one fighting Costa again or fighting a contender. And Strickland should be fighting for the fucking title. Strickland deserves the rematch. Yeah, I, I just, I think it's, 
I think it's just ridiculous that Adesanya gets to come back to a title fight. I honestly, I hate that. I can't stand it. He should, he should be, he should be treated. He's, he, he's not even that big of a star. Like, what do his pay per views sell? Like five, six hundred thousand. That's pretty good, but that's not like anything insane. That's not Conor McGregor numbers. Costa Smoke Strickland, obviously Aaron. No, I think I think Strickland takes that. He's got to be careful. Uh, Costa does have some power, especially with kicks. He's got to uh, Strickland's got to watch out for kicks. I think Strickland wins that. I don't think Costa does very well when he's pressured. My dad thinks Justin's mom drank when he was in the womb. Ah, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> they don't want Strickland in the limelight, says Aaron. I agree with that, yeah. They probably don't want Strickland as a champion. It's funny, though, like what the UFC wants and what the fans want. Because I would say the overall MMA fan base does not want Adesanya as a champion. The, the majority of MMA fans don't want Adesanya as a champion. I, I think I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I think the majority of MMA fans are strict, are are sick of Adesanya. They're 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 kind of they're kind of over him. Thoughts on Zuck possibly fighting in the UFC? I love it. I love it, man. I don't know why people don't like that. Who wouldn't want to see that? I don't know if anyone else noticed it. Maybe I missed it, but. In the UFC 300 hype promo that was being showed throughout UFC 300, they didn't show Strickland beating Izzy. And that was the biggest upset of 2023. Yeah, I noticed that too, Aaron. They didn't show that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, I, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly thought that was kind of convenient too. I'm like, where's that moment? That's one of the biggest moments in UFC history, period. Because it wasn't just the fact that he beat Adesanya, it was the way he did it too is what makes it such a big upset on the feet for five rounds never one time even attempted a takedown right like no one picked sean strickland to win that way no one did and yet he he made it look rather easy too like that's why that that's one of my favorite upsets is because all of it together like strickland was not supposed to win that fight he had so much going against him right he had so much going against him the fight was in Adesanya's territory, you know, in Australia. You know, he's he's Chinese, uh, you know, New Zealand and, uh, you know, Nigerian. Adesanya's all over the place. Um, but, you know, that's more his territory. He didn't have to fly 18 hours out there. Strickland had a bad weight cut, right? Strickland, Adesanya knew that fight was happening before Strickland did. He had more time to prepare for Strickland than Strickland did for Adesanya. Like, like the whole the whole deck was stacked against Strickland, and he pulled that off. It was one of the best upsets ever. One of the best upsets ever, man. I loved it. Noah says they did show it. I never saw it. I I never saw it, Noah. I watched all of UFC 300, and I I never saw that anywhere in the promo in the promo. But may, maybe maybe me and Aaron missed it somewhere. Who is the most boring fighter you always root it for? Aaron Planchfield, Nate Diaz, Cejudo. Honestly, for me, it's Gamrot. And, and I think Gamrot does have a boring style, but for some reason, I, I like the guy, man. I just like him. I want him to win. I like Gamrot. Even though he doesn't have a fan favorite style. Fan friendly style. People love an underdog story from a marketing perspective. It's one of the easiest ways to show a story because it it tells it for you the UFC intentionally left that out no it well Aaron Noah's saying that he saw it somewhere I, I do not remember seeing it anywhere and I, I like watched every second of UFC 300 even my bathroom breaks I was running to the bathroom and then coming back during the commercials They had multiple multiple hype videos throughout the week, but that but the day it mattered, they mostly didn't show it. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing it at, on the actual broadcast, but may, maybe I missed it. 
Uh, guys, before I end the stream, it's been almost two hours, so I need to end the stream here soon. Um, real quick, I, I think I'm going to make a video again. Um, I need to start making videos again. Give me, throw me some ideas. Like, I already have some ideas, but just, you know, I'm just curious. What type of videos would you guys want to see? And you know my style. My, I'm not super good at editing. It's not super professional. It's not like an MMA on point um, style of film. But you know my style. Moving pictures, commentary, my opinions mostly. What kind of stuff would you guys like to see? Alden says, I find Strickland boring for the most part, but I love it when he wins. I, I can agree with that. Strickland does have a very, um, you know, he wins decisions a lot. But yeah, I, I love when Strickland fights and wins. But he is objectively boring sometimes. Jessica Andrade is the most exciting fighter in women's MMA history. I agree with that, Alden. Yeah, I, I agree with that, man. Um, yeah. I, that's why I was confused when people were upset that she was fighting Marina Rodriguez at 300. Because I, I knew it, it's Andrade. It's going to be a good fight. Andrade doesn't have boring fights. She never has. At 135, at 125, at strawweight, she's always, she's always trying to throw down. She's always coming forward, like, yeah, I, I like Andrade a lot. Best rivalries ranked? Dark Horses of each division. Ooh, I like Dark Horses of each division. I love Dark Horses of each division. That's good. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Best rivalries ranked? That's a good one. Past versus present fantasy fights. When, when I first started the channel, I actually did Fantasy Fight Fridays, uh, where I would I would take two legends that people would suggest in the comments for the previous week's video, and do a full analysis on who I would think would win and why, and I'd go over their fight history and all that, uh, but the, those videos just didn't do well. I, I think I only did two of them, uh, but they, they took a lot of work. The, that was the most work I've ever put into a video for the least amount of views. <laughs> so like it's not all about views but you know if i'm gonna put you know a full day or two's worth of work into a video i wanted to get more than 150 views <laughs> and yeah those I, I did a fantasy fight friday i did one on fedor and milianenko versus randy couture and then i did another one on anderson selvin versus leota machida of course in their primes and um and they just they did not do shit for viewership those are like the two of the first videos I think I made on the channel. And they just, they did not do nothing. Best fighter from each country. That's another good one. Top underdog stories you can use your UFC knowledge to. I could. I like that idea. Everyone loves a, a good underdog story. Top five best UFC events. Man, Jonathan, bro, chill, bro. <laughs> I might need to like, like, I may need to pick your brain a little bit later. You got some you got some good ideas, man. Got some real good ideas. Who's Dylan? Chaken? I don't know who that is either. Yeah, Aaron, who is Dylan Chaken? I don't know who the hell that is. Fakest UFC stars. Oh, that's a good one. I love that one. I would I wouldn't say fakest UFC stars. I would say like manufactured UFC stars. So like Bo Nickel. Um Sean O'Malley is definitely one. They have they want Sean O'Malley to be a star so bad. I'd say Adesanya in some regard too is kind of a manufactured star. I really would. I know he sells pay-per-views and has a decent following. But, like, he has been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed by the UFC. He really has. He's, I think Adesanya has gotten more marketing than any other fighter ever except maybe Conor McGregor. And even then, I don't know. Best UFC storylines. Not a bad idea.
I'd say one of the best UFC storylines ever was Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. That was a great UFC story because it involves Dana White. Dana White personally involved with both of those guys, and then he becomes their, you know, he he goes from their friend and manager to the to the president, their boss basically of the UFC, and now they have to fight each other. And Chuck and Tito were such big stars on their own, like they didn't they didn't need a ton of promotion to become stars. Like that's how I swear to God, that's how you can tell who's a real star and who's not is by how much promotion and marketing the UFC has to invest in, into a certain fighter. Like for I swear, for the amount of, of time and effort and resources and opportunities they've given Adesanya, he should have five times the following he does if he actually had a likable personality and a fun fighting style and was actually a star. But I swear, I just, I really don't think that, maybe that's my hot take. I don't think Adesanya is really a star. I just think he has a ton of power behind him with the UFC and their marketing. Because they just, they, they really do just give him every fucking opportunity they can. Best tough seasons. Noah, that's a great idea. Hey, Jay, what's up, man? Jay, you came here at the end of the stream, man. I'm about to shut it down. I, uh, just asking everyone real quick, uh, what are some good ideas for videos that I can make? Fighters who definitely eat steak with ketchup. Oh my fucking god, Aaron. That's hilarious, but I don't I don't really make videos like that. Like that's more of like a bedtime MMA, uh, or like a you know, like a that's like a goofy, like tearless video. That, that's something that Rigo would make. And uh, not shitting on those guys at all. I love their videos, but that's not really my style. Maybe I can make it my style though. A little bit more goofy. Most icon fight shorts most icon fight so like the most iconic fights oh fight shorts you mean like actual fight shorts oh, okay <laughs> chuck liddell and tito ortiz yet again <laughs> maybe anderson silva he always had the yellow ones which always i thought looked really cool what are some other good fighters with iconic fighting shorts oh uh speedo man motherfucking dennis hallman dennis hallman the speedo guy dennis hallman was actually a legit fighter by the way he beat uh he beat matt hughes twice back in the day but he's unfortunately only known as Speedo, man. I'm thinking DDP manhandles Izzy. He certainly could. He's got a great wrestling advantage. Max's shorts, obviously the best. I did like it. His and Pereira shorts did look cool. That's one thing I like about Venom. Venom seems a lot better than Reebok was about actually giving fighters cooler looking shorts. They, they seem like they're more on top of that than Reebok was. I fucking hated Reebok's designs. I thought they just looked weird. I'd eat Aaron with ketchup. Girth, chill out, man. Watch it, buddy. Watch it. You don't want to get banned. Not a threat. Just saying. The mods will ban people that, that they get talking a little crazy. BJ Penn black belt shorts, pretty iconic. I don't remember those, were they? I don't remember BJ Penn wearing black belt shorts. I'm gonna look that up real quick. I've been saying I'm gonna end the stream for like an hour. I'm still going. BJ Penn black belt shorts. That's the first thing that came up. Oh, that does look fucking cool. I don't remember those. I don't remember him wearing those. Those look awesome. With the RVCA on there. That's cool. I love that. Yeah, if I make an iconic shorts video, that definitely will work. Best Instagram Instagrams games? What? I don't know what that means, Aaron. Dana should bring back open sponsorships. It would solve the fighter pay thing. I, I kind of miss the fighters having sponsorships, to be honest. That that gave them a lot more freedom. Yeah. they could, And they were also able to put them on the fight banners, too. So they were able to really pull in some sponsorship money. It did solve a lot of those issues. To be fair, it did look a little bit more tacky. Um, 
maybe maybe we leave the shorts as a venom thing, but we let them have their fight banners again, which ha had a lot of sponsors. So, but with the without the shorts, they probably wouldn't be able to pull in a ton of a uh, ton of uh, sponsored money. J A and Girth is a terrifying good <laughs> uh, terrifying duo. I can't talk. Yeah, they are. You guys better chill. I want to see my dynamic. I want to see dynamic fastener on people's shorts again. And uh, you know, you can't forget about um, corn nuts. Good old corn nuts and Rich's Tire Barn. The fucking, the fucking OG sponsors of the UFC, man. Rich's fucking Tire Barn. <laughs> if you know, you know. Fighters with the best Instagrams. Got you, Aaron. Got you. Right now, it's coming up on the bottom of my stream analytics that I have had exactly 69 unique viewers this stream. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. The average viewer has stayed in the stream for 14 minutes. That's pretty good. Pretty good engagement. I like it. Aaron says, think cool videos showing their lives outside fighting. Yuri's most recent video, Max Family Life. Not bad idea. Well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end off on that. Thank you all so much for coming out, and thank you for suggesting the video ideas. I need to make more videos. Uh, that's my real passion. I love doing the, these streams, but, you know. I like making thoughtful videos on MMA too, expressing my opinion. Guys, thank you for all the suggestions and for just coming out and supporting the stream. Um, yeah. Next stream, we are going to do some actual games. I'm going to bring back the leaderboard. Uh, and we might even read through some Instagram comments too, like Evan wants to do with uh, Jamal Hill's Instagram. Those comment, that comment section is pretty wild right now. So go check that out if you want. Jamal Hill's Instagram uh, is a fucking dumpster fire right now in the comments. So. But guys, as always, thank you so much for coming out. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. I'm also going to be posting a stream schedule here soon, too. And I'm going to stick with it. Guys, take it easy. I'll see you in the next one. Love you all.